All right, let's go. What's up, everyone? There we go, I'm hydrated. And let me just move this out of the way. Instant. So yeah, can I keep working on Vulcan? Um, I, I actually went ahead and implemented a swap chain and I just got done with the um, graphics pipeline creation. Although it's gonna get heavily refactored at some point. Um, so yeah, I'm actually quite a bit happier with the swap chain now. And I also created like a Vulcan device abstraction because I need constant access to the logical device and sometimes the physical device. So, and also having access to the Q indices can be useful. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually about to start and DV redeemed hydrate as well, of course. So yeah, I'm gonna start working on frame buffers. Guixo. No, I don't have a triangle yet. Um, I just got done with the pipeline creation stage. Um, so... <laughs> gonna start working on adding frame buffers. And then we need command buffers, and then we can start actually rendering stuff, so... I do have shader loading, although I haven't tested it. Speedrun 80% triangle. <laughs> yeah, no. Swap chain frame buffers, swap chain image views. Okay, so we need, really, we need a, a frame buffer for every image. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay. And obviously I'm going to create like a um, frame buffer abstraction and that will be like holding the, um, the render pass because currently it's just like the, the render pass is currently owned by the pipeline. And in the future, once I use what is it, dynamic rendering, I think it's called, I don't need render passes at all. Intel has some tutorials for Vulkan setting up swap chains and stuff. Really? Damn. What was the first language you learned? Um, in terms of like real programming language, Java. Um, I did do, learn like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but I don't consider that. Well, JavaScript's arguably programming, but obviously HTML not a programming language. So, uh, screw cookies. Okay. Always good to have more resources. But yeah, let's start with the frame buffer. And I'm immediately just gonna put that in a class. Um Vulcan frame buffer.
Okay. Swap chain frame buffers. Yeah, so we're basically gonna have to create a frame buffer specifically for like the swap chain. So the idea is the frame buffer is going to hold obviously a VK frame buffer and it's also going to have the render pass. In the future I may switch to dynamic rendering. At which point render passes are not necessary as far as I understand it. Um, so we need some kind of way of describing what the frame buffer kind of properties are. You should just start with dynamic rendering. Yeah, but I don't I'm not gonna do that because I actually want to know about uh, render passes, why they're not necessary on desktops and all of that. I want to actually learn about Vulcan, I don't want a bunch of tools to abstract away things and that kind of stuff from the beginning Otherwise, I would have used VK bootstrap to do that uh, Let's call it Vulcan frame buffer specification Which will have a uh, width And a height Property Eventually, we're gonna want to know like what what kind of attachments we want and that kind of stuff Presumably we're going to need to know like the images and all of that. Mm, well, because if we're creating a frame buffer that isn't sort of meant specifically for the swap chain, I imagine we would have to get or like create BK images. But obviously if it's a swap chain, we want to know, we need to basically get the swap chain images. Mm. We create one frame buffer for each image. So what I could technically do is just, and they specifically use an image view for the attachments. Hydrate from Tony. Right, so we could just do this. No, not yet, Tony, but I imagine I will. Right, so I could do this. Eventually, we're probably going to want like an image abstraction layer or something like that. But for now, I don't really care about doing that. I'm fine with this for now. Well, obviously I have to extend it as we go. So if we start by taking a look at how we create a, there we have the pipeline, how we create an actual, I did not want to do that, um, render pass. Because that needs to know about attachments and that kind of stuff. So 
So I think for now, uh, right, we're gonna need to know the format as well. For now, we'll assume that we'll only have a color attachment and no kind of depth stencil attachment. We need to know the image format. Also, I'm trying out like a new kind of naming convention that is a lot more similar to Unreal's naming convention because I quite like that. Uh, one dude there was like, hey, you coming to try? And I'm like, no, not exactly, but I'm gonna go there. <laughs> and we need to know, we need the device as well. Um, look at device. What is your thoughts on Python? Um, depends on. I think it's good for writing small tools and also for like data analysis. I don't think it's something that should be used for game engines or even game scripting specifically. Um, I don't think it's necessarily fast enough for that. As for the syntax, well, um, I don't like it. I don't like the syntax of it because it's terrible. Um, but it works. Uh, we should store the specification as well. Specification. I guess Python is a trade-off of easy to use library stuff versus performance. Yeah, exactly. So to create the render pass, we're gonna have to destroy that as well. And then we need to create the frame buffer which looks shockingly easy. At least initially. Attachment count, uh, for now that's just gonna be one, I think, yep. Hang on, is there... Okay, because obviously, so render passes have like a color attachment and it can have like a depth stencil attachment and that kind of stuff. Frame buffers also have attachments, but they're images. So what are the plans for the engine, 2D, 3D, or both? Uh, 3D. I, I'm i personally not that interested in 2D. So, I don't know, I, I may have like 2D support at some point, but initially it will be, well, initially it will be 2D and then it's gonna be 3D exclusively. And I don't know, I may add 2D support back in at a later date. But the only reason it's gonna be 2D in the beginning is because, well, I need to set it up first. Set it up for 2D and then add 3D. Or change it to 3D. So it needs to know the render pass. The render pass is like information about following frame buffers. Okay. But like, what's the difference between a render pass attachment and a frame buffer attachment? Because 
Like in OpenGL, a frame buffer attachment is, for an example, the color attachment and the depth attachment. But here I pass the color attachment to the render pass or rather to the sub pass. And then the attachment for the frame buffer. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. I think I'm getting what you're talking about. So this is going to be the image view. Yeah. Dynamic rendering is way easier to deal with. No need for either render pass or frame buffer. Yeah, and I'm gonna switch to dynamic rendering once I understand how to render stuff without it. You can use one render pass for multiple multiple frame buffers, right? Yeah, I think you can. Um, for now, I'm going with the very basic approach of having one render pass at, for every frame buffer, which obviously, like, obviously, if you're using dynamic rendering, you don't even need that. Um, I'm not using dynamic rendering right now, um, and arguably, it would be more efficient to maybe have multiple frame buffers per render pass but i'm going with the ba very basics i'm not going to try to you know deal with any kind of new features that abstract away a lot of stuff and i'm not not going to try to overcomplicate things with having multiple frame buffers per render pass or anything like that um with height and layers okay Uh, in specification with right height and layers with plus one okay actually in this case he does have multiple frame buffers per render pass so maybe that's more efficient uh, you can only use a frame buffer with the render passes that it's compatible with. Okay, sure. So, I mean, arguably in that case, what we could do is make it so... I don't want to have like a render pass abstraction right now. Um, but in that, that sense, we could take in, you know, just a VK render pass here. And say this is the render pass that it belongs to. Because arguably that would be quite a bit more efficient. Sure, I'll do that. Although I don't think I want the render pass to be in the, well, because the, the pipeline has to also be aware of the render pass, but whatever. You want a part of the swap chain. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So it's literally this. For now. Feels a bit like an unnecess unnecessary abstraction. And then possibly other ones as part of different render passes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be a while before I use multiple render passes.
hence the name render pass yeah okay honestly this feels very unnecessary at least right now because we only place where I'm gonna be using frame buffers right now is in the swap chain so I may as well just have the swap chain create all of, all of them and store them directly so that's what I'm gonna do swap chain So store a vector of VK frame buffers. We'll also have this create the um, render pass in that case. Um, and I can probably do that in the create function. I kind of have to though because it needs to happen after image views have been created. Um, so we may as well do frame buffers, resize, image count. We create the image views, then we do create render pass. Create default render pass. The reason why I dislike the original way of doing rendering is due to the swap chains requiring multiple frame buffers. However, with dynamic rendering, I could just specify an index in the swap chain and just pass the correct images. Yeah, like here's the thing. I will use dynamic rendering once I understand sort of the original bad way, right? But I think experiencing why dynamic rendering is so much better uh, firsthand can really give you a better understanding of why you should use dynamic rendering and I, I want to experience the pain <laughs> okay I'm not a masochist but I want to experience the pain just so I know why dynamic rendering is so much better because like it, if I really wanted to if I wanted to just do everything that is kind of recommended or abs you know not have to deal with a lot of the annoying parts of Vulkan. I could use third-party libraries right now to do that. I could get VK Bootstrap to use that for initialization instead of manually filling out 50 different structs. But I'm not going to do that right now because I do want to kind of have a deep understanding of it. Okay, so creating the default render pass. Let's go in here, steal this code. Swap chain image format, which we should already have. Yep, it's. I believe it's image format dot format. Yeah, because it's a VK format. Color attachment, yep. Sure. Is the swap chain not aware of the device? Yes, it is. that and that and let's remove that from there destroy the render pass depth attachments are gonna be cool yeah I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> no, I kind of am though. Because like once you get into 3D, um, that's when it becomes really exciting, I think. Let's yoink this. And get rid of that. To be honest, this entire thing can just be commented out for now, because I'm not going to be needing it. So we need to do this for every image view. Let's do a frame buffer size, because it's going to be the exact same. 
Thankfully, it's just create depth images, create image views to those, and add them to the render paths and the frame buffers, and then change the pipelines a bit, and you're golden. Yeah, just just do that. <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, it's not a lot. Um, the render pass is just going to be render pass. The image view is going to be image views I. And we should have width and height here somewhere, I think. Isn't it just the image extent? Effectively. Yeah, it should be. Right? Yeah. And Tony redeemed hydrate. Image extent dot width. Hydrata. And that's it. We can now call create frame buffer. Get logical device. Frame buffer create info. Aim frame buffers I. Ideniade. Sorry for mispronouncing that. Well, what's up? So that's frame buffers done. Now, the pipeline does need to be aware of the render pass and the attachments. You read it perfectly, lol. Damn. Gerber Moosh, what's up? And obviously, like, this whole thing is gonna become a lot more kind of... a lot less hard-coded, eventually. But yeah, so this needs to be aware of the render pass. Logically, I could make it aware of the entire swap chain. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm not going to bother. So let's just take in a render pass here. Uh, render pass for now. Specification render pass. Okay, so we create those. See, it's interesting to me, they create the frame buffers after the pipeline. Like, I, I assume that's not a requirement, because in my mind, the frame buffers kind of uh, dictate how the pipeline should be created, because the pipeline has to be aware of... Well, I mean, I guess, because po both the render pass and the pipeline needs to be aware of, like, the attachments. Is it wrong if I return an existing component and add a component if it exists? Um, I would actually create a... I don't know. I think it's fine. But I personally like added a add component if exists. No. What did I add? I, I added some... No, it was get component if exists or something like that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I think it's get or create component. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we do this. That's fine. And we also need to destroy them. Presumably before we destroy the render pass. I do that and let's be good and clear the vector. Okay. 
Okay. Now, Marka, is it fine to create the frame buffers before I create the pipeline? And does it make sense to do so? Okay, good. Because I'm eventually obviously gonna be automating the pipeline attachments and like the entire attachment thing so I can have multiple pipelines that use um, different attachments and that kind of stuff. But obviously that's definitely for the future. Let's actually see here. Uh, attachment count and p attachment parameters specifies the image view objects that should be bound to the respective attachment descriptions in the render pass okay so the in, in this case because we're just at, like adding one image view that is always going to use the color attachment but if i had a depth attachment then i'd need either the same image view twice or maybe two image views per frame buffer or something like that right and they need to be like in the or in the correct order as well i think two per yeah okay so basically for every attachment you need a separate image view got it that makes sense. And the width and height are self-explanatory, yep. Uh, well, you don't really have to, but you should. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine you'd end up with some problems otherwise. Also, my face is extremely blown out when I have that page open. But whatever. Um, Layers refers to the number of layers in image arrays. Yeah, okay. Not entirely sure what that means, but I don't need to know that yet. We have all the objects that are required for rendering. In the next chapter, we're going to write the first actual drawing commands. But before I do that, I need to actually make sure to create and set up a pipeline. Um, where do we create the swap chain? In the context. So, for now, I'm going to put the pipeline in the context as well. I'm putting pretty much everything in the context because I don't have a proper abstraction right now and I don't have a proper renderer set up. So let's include Vulkan pipeline.h. Let's store that. And after we've created it, we will create the pipeline. Which takes what? It takes pipeline specification, which requires the render pass and a shader. Okay. Just called it this. Um specification render pass which i'm gonna need to get from the soap chain yep render pass and a shader which i think is yep it's a shared pointer so let's do make shared uh vulcan shader which takes shader specification and the device and it requires the file paths okay shader spec let's just do this and it's gonna be resources shaders open this up see and the dot spv files resources shaders vertex shader dot spv
and M device. Pipeline needs specification and device. Specification M device. Let's go into the swap chain and make sure we can get the render pass. I think that is about everything. You you also have to transition the depth image to make it work properly. <laughs> awesome. So okay, let, let's go through this. Right. Cuz I have no idea if this will actually work. It's very possible that I screwed up something. Mono crashed. Welcome to the pain. Okay, so it built at least. Don't care about that. Three? Yep. Go through and create this. That's all well and good. We should now have a bunch of images, which we do. We then create the image views. And now it's time for the render pass. SRGB, yep. Color attachment reference. Sure. Wait, what? We had a verify that failed? Then why didn't it break? Um, Fusion is my own ga game engine that, I'm, that I started working on yesterday. Okay, it's great that we caught that, but it should have used debug break. Which is, it's weird that it didn't do that. Can't quite remember, does Hazel use OpenGL? Not any, well, Hazel 3D doesn't use it anymore. Uh, we removed that when we added Vulkan support. But obviously the game engine series is using it for now, but that's also going to change. So... I have a feeling it was either the swap chain or the images that failed. Could have been a false fail, possibly. Let's rerun that and hopefully it works. The churn is going to implement Vulcan or is well not for the game in your series. Yeah, it's gonna implement Vulcan at some point. It's probably gonna be a while though. I think he wants to he wants to be finished with scripting first. Okay, I'm gonna move the console to my other monitor so I can keep an eye on it. Okay, that worked. That worked. So it may have been a false positive here. What's your current goal with Fusion? Uh, get a triangle rendering. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it right now. 
Um, no, but like my my actual goal is um, learn Vulkan, learn graphics rendering or graphics programming. Takes like 700 lines of Vulkan to do that. Well, probably a bit more. Uh, C-sharp getters and setters as fields or methods. If it's a property, they're technically methods. And you should get them as such in mono. That worked. Yep. Okay, so I think it may have literally just been that I forgot equals VK success. Because that's zero. So it would have been technically false. Yeah. Okay, render pass. Looks good so far. Now I don't have a verify here, which I should have. I think I'm doing enter name as name or get name or set name. Oh no. Dude, use a property. Seriously, do not you do not make a get name and set name method unless you absolutely have to. Like un unless you're doing something other than just setting and like using an internal call, you don't use a method. Use a property. I hope that worked. I assume it did. I definitely should go through and add a bunch of um, um, verifies everywhere. Let's check shader loading. Just don't want to confuse stuff with some other stuff. Yeah, that's fine. So we do that. We read. We appear to have actual data, which is good. That worked. Same thing for the fragment. Because, for example, name could be entity name or component name. Yeah, I was like, components don't have names. I mean, technically they could, but... Is it now safe for me to destroy the fragment modules if... Uh, this kind of stuff is behind me. I'm just a humble Godot user. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're still here, Marco. But is is this correct? Should I destroy the modules after I've assigned them to the actual stages? Bonnie Montana, what's up? Because this doesn't feel like I should be doing this. Okay, so let's take a look what the CAD 092. You can't destroy them after the pipeline after the pipeline has been created. Okay. So I can't destroy them here. Because the pipeline hasn't been created, yes. Yep, modules can be destroyed after pipeline creation, yeah. Okay. So I need to fix that because the pipeline has not been created here. So we need to hold on to these for a while, temporarily. Just do it in the destructor. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't technically need to clean them up unless like the entire shader is being destroyed or something. I don't think it's a lot of excess memory usage. To keep them around how is the vulcan experience coming along swap chain fixed and onto the pipelines um it's coming along quite nicely actually um i actually really like the api um and also it, it hasn't been too painful so far uh swap chains i'm actually kind of happy with where that's at right now pipeline i have written the code for it but i still haven't tested it so let's see our verdicts. 
Mojo Fragments Mojo Mm, despite its verbosity, I think I find it quite intuitive for the front loading. Uh, does Vulcan interact with another API, or does it go straight to the GPU? It, it, it goes straight to the GPU, um, as far as I know. Like, obviously, it communicates with the driver, but um, yeah, it doesn't use like a separate graphics API underneath. It's it's very low level, so. I wanted to say, take a snip on my broken taskbar. <laughs> yeah, it goes through driver and then GPU. Okay. So now that we've done that, we shouldn't end up with any big problems. What's up, E Man? Uh, I started using TXGI once, though. Um. What? There was like four icons in the space of two. Awesome. All right, so we have that fixed. Good. That means we can actually jump past the shader creation and go into the pipeline. Although I'm going to make sure to add a verify. Because I don't trust the code I've written. It's a lot of code. Um, let's just put a breakpoint here. That seems to work. Stage count is two, yep. That's correct. We now have the stages. We have a layout, render pause, yep. And I did not get a crash. Okay. Couldn't you just take me back to... It works! Awesome. Now I do get quite a lot of validation errors here um, because I not cleaning them, cleaning things up properly. But holy shit! Okay, so pipeline clean up uh, cleans up before soap chain. Fusion is my own custom game engine that I started working on yesterday. Um, it's kind of mainly for me to learn. Uh, uh, do you get through swap chain resize already? No, not yet. Uh, I want an event system for that because, um, well, you really should handle it through an event system, but I don't need resizing at this time, so that's coming for later. Uh, does the OS also use a graphics API like Vulkan to render the desktop? I imagine it would. Like, I imagine Windows would want to use, like, Direct 3D. Well, I don't know, actually. It might use some kind of other system that can still like communicate with the GPU. Uh, okay, so we clean up the pipeline. Uh, you can act on the result of VK acquire next. Really? Uh huh. But how would that know that I've resized the window? And lots of that that comes with Windows render using Direct 2D or OpenGL 3. Cool. But yeah, how would VK acquire next? Because I, I assume that's acquiring like the next image. Um, how would that, that know that I've resized the window? Because of the surface, I guess, maybe. 
Okay, yeah. So we can detect that. Yeah, because I guess it would be aware of the surface. So, yeah. Cool. But I think it, you know, you might as well handle it with an event system because... I mean, you can obviously check with VK Acquire next, regardless. But since I'm going to want to know about resizing for other stuff uh, via the event system. Uh, thank you, Purple Lops. Have a nice day. Uh, you shouldn't use events for that. But why not? In the end, it's going to resize just the same. You'll end up with validation errors if you call it too late. Oh, that's seriously annoying. Makes sense, but it's annoying. Uh, but let's see if we get any validation errors on shutdown now, because I want to make sure I clean stuff up properly. Uh, I don't need that anymore. That's close. Okay, and I'm now cleaning things up properly. Because I'm not getting any validation errors on close. Um, cool. So that's frame buffers set up. Time to actually create some commands and command pools and stuff like that. Okay. Let's check. Commands in Vulcan-like drawing operations and memory transfers are not executed directly using function calls. You have to record all operations you want to perform in command buffer objects. The advantage of this is that when they're when we are ready to tell the Vulcan, sure, yes, uh, what we want to do, all the commands are submitted together, and Vulcan can be more efficient can more efficiently process the commands since all of them are available together. And it allows command recording to happen in multiple threads if so desired which is one of the best parts about vulcan multi-threading uh i'm not using any kind of like vulcan allocation alloc allocator uh yet but um i'm gonna be using vma at some point if that's what you're talking about okay so we need to create command pools Command pools manage the memory that is used to store the buffers and command buffers. Uh, no, store the buffers and command buffers are allocated from them. Okay. I imagine this is where like VMA would come in handy for allocating command pools and command queues and all that kind of stuff. You know, command buffers rather. So. Okay, so it needs to be aware of the Q family. And it doesn't seem like it's tied to the swap chain or anything like that, which makes a lot of sense because it's literally just a buffer of commands. Command buffers are allocated rather easily yourself. Yeah, still probably a good idea to use VMA so you don't hit the memory allocation cap. But, like, yeah, I can... Like, I have no idea where VMA actually comes in handy. Image and buffer memory. Okay. Good to know. Um, see, this is where I kind of, where I really should start abstracting things into a better kind of rendering architecture or renderer architecture. Because now I'm gonna have to, now that we're actually getting like drawing stuff, I'm obviously gonna have to you know, invoke some draw commands every frame. Go hard and ditch VMA. <laughs> no. Well, 
I'm, I'm gonna be using VMA at some point because yeah so command pool Create command pool and command offers. So the actual command pool doesn't take much at all. One thing I will say about Vulkan, why do I have to explicitly specify as type? Like, it already knows what this should be, right? So why couldn't it, you know, default, like, set it in the actual struct directly? Because it doesn't actually know. Yeah, but I mean... Then how can it check? If it doesn't actually know what it should be. It's mainly for the validation layers. Oh, okay, yeah. Extensibility purpose. I see. It's still annoying. The uh, flags, which is create reset command buffer bit, uh, allow command buffers to be re recorded individually without this flag, they all have to be reset together. Okay, and create transient bit is a hint that command buffers are re recorded with new commands very often. Yeah, like obviously it's not a big deal, but it's just a tiny bit annoying. And we need to use the reset command buffer bit. Why? Whenever I alt tab auto visual studio and then I tab back in, they like it selects the menu items for some reason. You should have one command pool for every frame in flight. Yeah, but currently I'm probably only going to be using one frame in flight. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll be using multiple. And Tony redeemed hydrate, so I'm going to have to go and get some more water. Productivity doesn't know type. Yes. Q family index. Um, I can get that from the device. Graphics Q, because they should probably be identical. Yeah, no problem, Bonnie. Hazard looking sick now. Cool. Uh, okay, and then we just created. And then we need to destroy it here, presumably. Mm. 
And now we need command buffers. Command buffers will be automatically freed when their command pool is destroyed. That's nice. Command buffer allocate info. Command buffer count, command pool. We're gonna have to set that presumably. Level, next, and type. So let's start with type. Structure type. Command buffer allocate info. Let's set the command pool to be that. Add the reset command buffer flag to the pool. Yeah, it's already there. Level command buffer level primary, and we can have secondary, which cannot be okay. So, primary can be submitted to a queue for execution but cannot be called from other command buffers. Command buffers can call other command buffers, that's interesting. Um, level secondary cannot be submitted directly but can be called from primary command buffers. Reuse common operations from primary command buffers. Okay. Sure. So we're going to be using the primary. Command buffer counts. We're going to have one command buffer. It's kind of cool mainly to do... Th Things like filling multiple buffers on separate threads and then calling them all in order on the main thread or something. Okay. Sure. What about command? Oh, okay. So you can allocate multiple command buffers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Just like you can um, create multiple pipelines with a, with a single call. Uh, so the main command buffer is like a list of other command buffers. Like you let 10 people make a list item and then combine them in one and execute. That's kind of what it sounds like to me, but I am no Vulcan expert. Create command buffer. Oh, it's VK allocate command buffer. Sorry. Uh, device get logical device. Okay, so you could actually just go through and say, okay, I want three command buffers because I have three frames in flights. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You have multiple command pools if you have multiple frames in flight, and you can have multiple command buffers per pool. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. And I assume this returns a VK result. Yes, it does. Cool. Record command buffer that writes the commands we want to execute into a command buffer. Yeah, like graphics programming in itself, I don't think is inherently difficult like it, it, there's obviously some complex systems that you have to design and obviously the different rendering techniques can definitely be complex but as long as you understand 
the basics of it and as long as you understand the API, I, th I don't think it's that difficult. Because I'm able to wrap my head around most of these things and I've never gotten this far into actually implementing Vulkan. I'm realizing it's the first day of university in just 13 hours. Damn. Yeah, that's right. It's about now that school's starting back up. Okay, so we have a... Record command buffer. It writes the commands into a command buffer. We'll be passed is as a parameter as well as the index of the current swap chain image we want to write to. We always begin recording a command buffer by calling VK begin command buffer with a small structure as an argument that specifies some details about the usage of this specific command buffer. Okay. Um, before I do that, I... Oh, what's up, Emily? Bit of a high buy. I might be back later, but I wanted to say hi. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to be live for quite a while. And mark a regime hydrate, which is fitting considering I'm heading to the toilet right now. Also, remind me after the stream that I need to make a, uh, like, taking a break screen. Because I still haven't done that. So, um... Have a starting soon screen.
All right, we're back, and I'm gonna switch the song because this is gonna make people fall asleep. There we go. Oh, come on. Sun is in my eye. Um, that with Vulcan currently about to put Vulcan abstraction stuff into Kionom. Um, how does KHR dynamic rendering work? Uh, command begin rendering and pausing the information needed and then render like normal but without using a render pass or frame buffer. What are manage type and manage clause in Hazel? Um, manage type is effectively a type utility class. It lets us query certain type data about the C sharp type. So it, is it a struct, um, is it reference type, is it abstract, or anything like that. Manage clause basically just holds um, a monoclass pointer and some information about fields and properties and methods. It's pretty much it. So I assume that I can technically begin the command buffer recording immediately, or, okay, should I, do I begin a, the recording of a command buffer every frame? All right, so I, I start recording, I record my data, I render, I stop recording, or rather I stop recording and I render, render or execute the commands and then start that over the next frame again. Or can I just start recording and never stop? I suspect it's the first one. Which... So, okay, here's the question. Do I actually go and start working on a proper kind of rendering implementation Right, so I add like a renderer, I add a, a Vulkan renderer that has like begin command or begin recording, begin command buffer or whatever, uh, and make that work. Start and submit percent. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so okay, do I do I create a proper rendering implementation or start working on it, or do I continue writing everything in Vulkan context? Because I could start abstracting these into like uh, rendering context and that kind of stuff and make it a bit more API agnostic and actually get something that's a bit better than bare minimum. Because now we're actually getting into recording commands, not just setting up pipelines and contexts and that kind of stuff. So I think before I do anything else, I'm actually going to work on refactoring this and making it better and actually making it a bit more platform agnostic or API agnostic, I guess. So Let's go and add a renderer folder. Here I will have hmm. Let's start by adding a graphics context. And I don't want to create, well, no, before I do that, I'm, I'm still going to roll with no kind of real abstraction, but I'm going to actually start making 
a bit of a rendering renderer class. So we're gonna have a Vulcan renderer. Here. And the question is, should I make it static, right? So we'd have like a static void um, begin command buffer. And like end command buffer. Or should we make it not static? Because I know a lot of people have issues with stuff being completely, completely static. Um, and that can definitely cause problems at time. If I don't make it static, I could use RAII to, which I've been doing so far. And I think, I mean, it might be a bit annoying. No, what I'm going to do is go for a slight singleton approach for now. So I'm going to have this. But I'm also gonna have a um, static Vulcan renderer reference get. Let's add a constructor and destructor. Unmanaged type is the raw type of the field. Uh, yes. It is. It's not technically appropriately named. Um, it's basically just a way for us to go from um, to identify the C sharp type using an enum, right? That's the purpose of it. Realistically, I should have called it like manage type, but that was already taken by the like utility class. Yeah. So that's a bit of bad naming on my part. To me, it looks like it combines unmanaged generic types and managed types. We don't. I don't think so. I don't know, maybe. I might also be misunderstanding. Uh, cannot instantiate Vulcan render multiple times. And set it equal to this. Uh, there are bool and there are mesh. Well, yeah. Thinspin, what's up? Fusion is my game engine. I should add a command that kind of gives it an explanation because a lot of people have been wondering what Fusion is. Uh, it's my game engine. I just started working on it. So I started I started working on it yesterday. Uh, other one is a built-in type and other is a class. Yeah, but like there's no point in Kind of distinguishing between those when it comes to representing them as an enum, I don't think, because they're all types in the end. Um, set s instance equals to null pointer. Now, I want the renderer to be literally just recording commands effectively. I don't want it to necessarily have that much storage. It should mainly be an interface, I think. But that might change. That means we're gonna have to take in the command buffer here. 
which I'm fine with. And the image index. Sure, let's let's try and replicate this somewhat decently for now. Okay, so does instantiate create all types of entities prefabs? You mean the C sharp version of like the instantiate function or the C instantiate function? Because I think we have one in C as well. Yes. Um, so the C sharp version instantiate literally just instantiates a prefab. That doesn't ins well, obviously creates an entity, but it doesn't. You can't instantiate an entity unless you have a prefab. Let's just recreate these. Okay, so VK command buffer begin info. Okay, so I think we'll make it so that without parameters it instantiates an empty entity to the world origin. Yeah. Gorsik, what's up with the stretch? <sighs> Flags and inheritance info. So the flags parameter specifies how we're going to use the command buffer. Use it one time submit bit. The command buffer will be re-recorded right after executing it once. Okay, secondary, the command buffer can be submitted, resubmitted while it is also already pending execution. And none of them are applicable right now. Okay. Interesting. How are things going with Fusion? Um, better. I have a swap chain set up and I have the pipeline being created. Uh, I have frame buffers set up. Now I'm actually going to try and record some render commands. Although I don't think we're anywhere near actually having a triangle. Well, maybe we are. I don't know. P inheritance info is only relevant for secondary command buffers. Okay. So what's this? This would be zero by default, I think. Well, maybe not. So just Vulcan stuff for now. Uh, I, I set up some minor maintenance stuff. So I have an actual application clause now. Um, but it, it's bare bones. There's literally nothing here aside from calculating like time steps and that kind of stuff. But primarily I'm just doing Vulcan, yeah. So VK, begin command buffer, takes in the actual command buffer and begin info. And that can fail. I need to clean up my script binding class on C++. Yeah, that's doesn't surprise me. Those, like all scripting related classes, oftentimes just become nuked. Okay, so we are now able to begin recording commands. If the command buffer was already recorded once, then a call to will implicitly reset it. 
it's not possible to append commands to a buffer at a later time. Okay. So if you end the recording, you will have to... So you have to make sure that all of the commands have been recorded when you end it and submit it. Cool. Um, drawing starts by beginning the render pass. Uh, time step calculations inside application run are fine. Uh, I haven't double checked. It's possible they could be a bit off because I'm using... So in Hazel, we use glfw get time. Um, I decided I did not want to rely on glfw for time. So I use a high, res high resolution clock. And I assume that it's correct. But I haven't actually verified it. Provides easy access to a certain method without being a clusterfuck. Yeah. Okay, so we need to start a render pass. This is where I think having a begin draw, begin render, um, begin render pass. Well, yeah. Basic drawing commands. I don't know. We could say like rename this to begin begin render or begin draw have it taken the command buffer the image index as well as the render pass that we're going to be using uh we got uh public git repo for this project yes i do i made it public yesterday after and end the, ended the stream um There it is. So yeah, I could make it begin draw and draw. Takes in the command buffer, the image index, and the render pulse. Right, so it will begin recording, it will begin the render pulse. Although, so it depends on, can we record multiple render passes? Um, like, can we begin multiple render passes in the scope of a single command buffer? I would imagine we can, right? At which point we would probably want these to be different. We'd probably want begin command buffer and command buffer and then begin uh, render pause and render pause I don't know if you technically end a render pause I would imagine you do let's add those Drawing starts by beginning a render pass with VK command begin render pass. It's configured using some parameters in a render pass begin infostruct. We give it the render pass and the frame buffer at the image index. Okay. Cool, Tony. So we're gonna have have to keep track of the current image index at some point. Because I don't want to have to keep passing that around everywhere. Um, I imagine when, once we actually get to the point where we're having to acquire the next image, we can just increment the index or re, re, retrieve the image. Uh, the image index to be correct so we don't have to pass it around um, 
but until I know how that works, I'm just gonna keep passing it around. I don't really mind doing that. But we actually need a frame buffer. Crap. Yeah, that kind of sucks. At that point, I think beginning the render pause should be the responsibility of the swap chain. Because that is the thing that owns it right now. Yes, I think so. For now. I mean, we can obviously get the render pause, but begin render pause. And render pause. This is gonna get massively refactored. Okay, so VK render pause begin info. We need to give it the render pause. And the frame buffer of the current image index, which I don't currently have. So for now, I'm just going to do current image. The first parameters are the render pass itself and the attachments to bind. We created a frame buffer for each swap chain image where it is specified as a color attachment. So we need to bind the frame buffer. Uh, yeah. Using the image index parameter which was passed in, we can pick the right frame buffer. And then render area. Uh, defines where shader loads and stores will take place. The pixels outside will have undefined values and should match the size of the att attachments. So render area offset. Probably don't even need to specify that, but whatever. Extent, which is going to be image extent. The next, oh yeah, I already checked that. Clear color, yeah. So that's part of the render pass begin info. Okay. Welcome back, Emily. What is this thing? Clear color value, which... Okay. I can start porting it now. <laughs> yeah, definitely worth porting something that is barely functional. Zero. Uh, let's clear it to that and then do clear value count one clear values which is going to be just that yeah I don't think it's going to compile right off the bat well it's not that big, so I don't see why it wouldn't. But yeah, you never know. Okay. The last two parameters. Yep, whatever. And then we do command begin render pass. With the command buffer. 
Okay, so we actually do need to know what the command buffer is, which makes sense. Sub pass contents. VK sub pass contents inline. Okay, so all of the functions that record commands can be recognized by their VK command prefix. They all return void. Okay. The first parameter is always the command buffer. Okay. Right. Um, I guess maybe you can record to multiple command buffers at the same time. Um, for an example, on multiple threads. So that does make sense that you would need to tell it which one to record into. Um, the second parameter specifies the details of the render pass we've just provided. Yeah, that's obvious. The final parameter controls how the drawing commands within the render pass will be provided. They can be inline or secondary command buffers. Um, will be embedded in the primary command buffer itself and have no and no secondary command buffers will be executed or it will be executed from a secondary command buffer okay so we want sub pass contents inline sub pass contents inline now I can create an entity at a point cool and then we have to bind the pipeline Right. See, this is kind of making me think that the Vulkan renderer should own and create the command buffer. Freddy Gamer, thank you so much for following. What's up? So yeah, I think Vulkan Renderer should own the command buffer. From Colombia, awesome. No, I don't. I don't use Java. Yeah, I think the renderer should own the command buffers. To be honest. I don't do much Python either. Mainly C++ and C Sharp. Well, mainly C++, but C Sharp as well sometimes. Make C Sharp have access to asset handles. Yep, that's very useful. Okay, yep. I'm changing this up. The context will no longer be responsible for command pools or command buffers. At least not at this time. That will be the renderer. Um, and okay, so we do need to have a command pool for every image, effectively. Well, we want it, no, for every frame in flight, but yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter right now. What do we need to create a command buff or command pool? Um, we need the device. That's it. So I think it makes perfect sense that the renderer should be aware of the device. Don't need to include Vulkan there. So let's take in a const shared Vulkan device. Device. And this is where we're going to allocate the command pool and command buffer. So basically, we'd create the renderer in here, for an example. 
because that way the renderer is what you're going to be interfacing with whenever you want to record a command. Which means this is not going to live in here. And considering the fact that this is very heavily tied to the command buffer, I'm just going to say begin. Mm, no. Yeah. Begin. Render. Pause. These do not need to take in the command buffer at this time. Well, yeah, they sort of do. They should at least. Uh, how about you, C++ for game logic, no scripting language? Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, I like C Sharp. Um, I think it's really good for scripting. But obviously, C++, like if I'm going with C Sharp, I'm going to have to deal with mono, which is <clears throat> always fun. Again, we're probably going to be getting that somewhere. So. Techbox North, thank you so much for following. Yeah, I'm paid you to make the mono stuff for Hazel, so just joink it. Yeah, but if I'm gonna joink it, I'm probably gonna rewrite it, make it better. I mean, C++ is easier in terms of adding scripting, yes, but it's also a lot less safe. Yes, again. <laughs> Don't you know I'm the person who rewrites everything? Delete fusion. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, we need to know the command buffer and we also need to know the render pass. Nope. Yes, swap chain. Frame buffers. Uh, we're gonna have to get the swap chain. Really? It actually built with only a few fixes. What what were the, the fixes? Yeah, we're gonna have to get the swap chain, I think. For now. Somehow. Um swap chain is owned by the context. And we're gonna have to destroy the command pool, obviously. Once we destroy this, mostly just the MSVC preprocessor being non standard. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think there should be nearly as many issues because I have enabled conformance mode and I haven't set warnings to like the fourth level, I have them on the third level, but I did enable conformance mode. And I try to be good at not using weird MSVC garbage. Hello, Flow Sweet here. I'm using Constructor 3, but this weekend I've started my attempt to move away from drag and drop programming with C Railit. Awesome. Good luck with that. Um, yeah. It's actually really cool that people can get into programming with like drag and drop interfaces and then obviously it's quite different to move over to like an actual programming language like C++ but still very cool. Oh, Egorsik, thank you so much for the subscription. Seriously appreciate it, man. 
we should have a nice and easy way of getting at the context. Because if I can get the context, I can get all of this without having to pass it around as much. So I'm going to do this. Get context. Or get. Go for a single plan approach here as well. We'll have... Gubra Moosh redoomed posture check. Some bigger runtime issues. Yeah, I mean, I imagine you can't link to Vulcan and that kind of stuff. Because I did hard code it to use, like, the Vulcan SDK environment variable as well as uh, Vulcan1.lib. And also, like, it probably can't load the symbols and whatnot. So, definitely probably some issues with that. But also, it's like, I started this yesterday. It compiles and links fine, it's more logic stuff. Well, yeah, but also it's like, I mean, look at this, I'm just throwing in code wherever I can, wherever it kind of fits right now. Um, because I'm not making a, a, an abstraction right now. Uh, this, let's add a verify, make sure S instance is null pointer. I've dabbled with Unity and Game Maker and other engines for a few years, but really with C++ seemed appealing. Yeah. Is this the first game engine you made? Uh, no. Hazel. I work in Hazel. So that's kind of my first... Now, obviously, like, I did not make Hazel myself, but this is not the first game engine I'm working on. This is, however, the first game engine I'm making completely by myself. So we do that. Um, thank you for the absolute garbage syntax generation or code generation. I'm a mathematician and I want to study programming, so I feel like if I watch you so often, you deserve sub. You, you don't have to feel like you have to give me a sub or anything, really. I, I really just do this for fun. But I do, I do appreciate it, I will say that. Okay, so we can get the context, good. Let's include Vulcan context. And add. Shared. Vulcan. Swap chain for now. Start with that. Get swap chain. Turn that. We can do swap chain. We need a way of getting the frame buffers from the swap chain. Get rid of that. Frame buffer, get frame buffer, um, image index. Let's do a verify that this is less than frame buffers size, and then return frame buffers 
at that. And again, I have no clue how all of this is going to work together. Like, where do we get the current image index from and all of that stuff? Uh, extent 2D, get swap chain extent. Okay, good. We have that. So let's, did I, yep, I deleted that, good. What's not working for you, Gorzik? You know, now that I can get the swap chain, yeah, no, we should still take in the render pass though. Command bind pipeline. Which again, I'm just gonna quickly get from Vulcan pipeline or from the context. Yet graphics pipeline. Obviously this is gonna change massively um, over time but right and we do we need to provide the viewport and the scissor at this point so Eventually, I imagine all we're going to be doing is binding a pipeline because the pipeline should be aware of the uh, render pass and the frame buffers. Maybe even the command buffer, although that's more doubtful, to be honest. Um, but eventually, begin render pass is going to be like begin pipeline instead. Um, or bind pipeline or something like that, which will bind, it will begin the render pass, bind the pipeline and all of that. And once we get on to using dynamic rendering, it's going to be a whole different thing. Let's just call bind pipeline. It takes the command buffer. and presumably the actual pipeline. Oh, it's literally just VK bind pipeline, which takes in the command buffer and the pipeline. Let's just do this for now. I have no idea if this even makes sense, but whatever. So it's VK command bind pipeline command buffer. The bind point being graphics. Yes. And the pipeline. Have a good rest of your day, Peter, and everyone. Gotta go. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Pointer 56. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Draw. which requires the command buffer.
so we need to do VK viewport. Set that up. Is it a float? Yes, it is. Wait. Whatever. For now, we'll pass in. Okay, we don't have a way of getting that uh, right now, but whatever, let's take in float with hide for now. I can't wait for this to have a better structure. Zero and one. And then swap chain extent. We can actually get that pretty easily. When triangle, hopefully soon, because I'm about to write the actual VK command draw here. Command buffer. Three, one instance, zero, zero. In theory, we should get a triangle, but we won't because we currently don't do any kind of image swapping or anything like that. Um, but hopefully soon. What time is it? If I'm able to do this really quickly, I can get it, hopefully get it done before I end the stream. Okay, so you end the render pass and you end the command buffer. Okay, command end render pass. Takes in the command buffer but not the render pass. I'm stream until you get it done. No, because I have work tomorrow. Okay, but I guess this actually means, the fact that we don't have to tell it which render pass to end, means that we effectively bind the render pass to the command buffer. Meaning that we can actually do this in begin command buffer. Yes. And to be honest, at that point, we may as well just give it all of the data. So. Uh, let's call it begin draw and end draw. We give it the command buffer. We give it the render pass. And we give it the pipeline. And that's the data you need to, to do that. That means we can get rid of that and literally just have this. Yes. So we begin the command buffer. We begin the render pass. We end the render pass. We bind the pipeline. And then presumably we have to unbind the pipeline. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. Doesn't look like it. So we don't ever, we don't unbind the pipeline, we just Okay. 
sure so we end the render pause and then we do and command buffer and we do need to actually make sure we didn't have any errors at this point We'll write the code for the main loop, which will acquire an image from the swap chain, record and execute a command buffer, and then return the finished image to the swap chain. Let's go. Okay. So the question is, where do I do this? I have in Windows window, process events, which does call that. That gets called from application. So we'd actually want to render here. So. What I'm going to do right now is. Something pretty dumb the renderer will be constructed after the context hash has finished constructing which happens here and I hate writing this code but it's for testing purposes so doesn't matter too much And the welcome renderer needs the device so we can do we have to include welcome context so we can do welcome context get get well we can just get that directly in here Yeah, we don't need to do that in here at all. Which technically means we don't even need to store the device. We can just get it from the context. I uh, get device. Cool. And then we can just do begin draw. We need to pass it the command buffer, which we only have one of. Um, yeah. We current. Well, yeah. Let's for now just remove those. Eventually, I'm gonna have like a proper abstraction for all of this, but.
for now this is fine. We just have one command buffer that we record into. Meaning we just need to pass the render pass and the pipeline. Which belongs to the context. Well, no, to the swap chain actually. Well, the pipeline doesn't, so we need to create a pipeline. Actually, no, that's already being created in the context. So for now, let's just be a complete idiot and have all of these things be retrieved from the swap chain. Swap chain, get render pass. And we need to do Vulcan contacts, get, pip get pipeline. Uh, Fusion is my uh, personal game engine that I started making yesterday. Yeah, I haven't added that yet. I, I'm, I'm going to add a command for it. Uh, so what, what was this? The pipeline. Get graphics pipeline. So yeah, I should definitely add that. Come on. Shared. No, it's just VK pipeline. Get pipeline. Turn pipeline. Get pipeline. It's fine. I'm literally just testing stuff right now, so. Doesn't matter if it's crap. End draw. Draw, which needs width and a height, which isn't that just. That would be the frame buffer, like the GLFW frame buffer. Uh, what is the main source for Vulkan documentation, or do you know it by heart? I do not know it by heart. No, I'm using Vulkan tutorial right now, just so I can like get an idea for the API. Um, I do know a little bit about Vulkan from Hazel, um, but yeah, mainly just following along with the tutorial to learn the API itself, and then I'm going to create a an API abstraction and a renderer from that. So what should width and height be here? It's my question. Um... <clears throat> Don't actually remember that viewports. Um, size of the swap chain in this image is may differ from the width height of the window. Okay, so it's the um, swap chain frame buffer size, which is literally just swap chain extent. It's this, as far as I understand it. BK extent, extent 2D, swap chain extent, close that. We assign that there, we do this, that, width, and height. Ajita. Meaning those two don't actually matter, so we can just pause nothing. Now, okay, so that's a command, so I suspect we should have it be in this order. Should we tell Daniel to work on Vulcan as well? I don't think he's ever going to do that, at least not for a long time. He seems pretty stuck with um, open jail for now. I assume this is the correct order. Because draw is an actual command that we're according to the command buffer. Right? So... Yeah. And now we need to actually, like, swap the buffers and everything like that. As well as get the next... Um, swap chain image and all that stuff. I'm going to write a draw frame function that will be called from the main loop uh, to put the triangle on the screen. Okay. 
So I'm going to redeem, redeem the hydrate. So I'm going to need to get more water. You see, Tony, you say that you want me to render a triangle on the stream. But you keep making me drink water, which takes away from the uh, time that I can be productive. Hmm? Did you think about that? <sighs> okay, outline of a frame. A high level outline. Wait for the previous frame to finish. Acquire an image from the sort chain. Record a command buffer which draws the scene onto that image. Submit the recorded command buffer. Present the swap chain image. Synchronization. Yeah, fun stuff. Um, synchronization of execution on the GPU is explicit. Um, the order of operations is up to us to define using various synchronization primitives, which tell the driver the order we want things to run in. This means that many Vulkan API calls which start executing work on the GPU are asynchronous. The functions will return before the operation is finished, which is where I think semaphores or fences come in handy. There are a number of events that we need to order explicitly because they happen on the GPU, such as acquire an image, execute commands, and present the image. Semaphores. Um, add order between queue operations. See, this is the part of Vulkan that can be a bit annoying. There's a lot of stuff that you have to keep a track of. Uh, queue operations refer to the work we submit to a queue, either in command buffer or from within a functions. Okay. Binary and timeline. Sure. I'm sticking I'm sticking with OpenGL ES3 for life. Why? Or as I like to call it open glass. Okay. Theory time. Because only binary semaphores will be used in this tutorial we will not discuss timeline semaphores that's bullshit i want to know what the difference is video was the last feature i needed yeah what the hell is a timeline semaphore explain for f god damn i hate it when tutorials do this uh opengl hasn't been discontinued necessarily but it's definitely on its way out at least in terms of support. I mean, it's not actively developed. Um, but it's definitely on its way out, I think. Okay. So I guess they're not going to explain timeline semaphores for whatever reason. So it's either unsignaled or signaled. It begins life as unsignaled. Uh, as a... Okay. I'm gonna have to read through this a couple of times after after the stream because this is gonna. Well, I mean, we already we've already seen Apple literally refuse to properly support OpenGL. So I definitely think we're gonna start seeing that more and more as time goes on. Or at least they're gonna discontinue the support. They might still have it in there. Like Nvidia might keep OpenGL support in... I mean, App Apple definitely no longer... 
they deprecated it from what i know open jail is deprecated since years now yeah okay so they technically have support for it but it's not but it's been deprecated But I think we're going to start seeing deprecation more and more. Because OpenGL is outdated. There, it, it doesn't work with... Yeah, it can run OpenGL 4.1, but it's considered deprecated. Because like OpenGL, there, it's not able to take advantage of multiple cores it's not able to take care uh, take advantage of multi-threading so it's definitely an outdated api okay i'm not gonna read through that i'm gonna read through it later so okay we record command buffers we create a sem4 we submit that okay Yeah, but if you're going to be using multiple cores, you may as well go for Vulkan. That's actually designed to work well with um, with multiple cores and multiple threads out of the box. Because if you're doing multi-threading, you, you really want to go with um, Vulkan over OpenGL, since Vulkan is actually designed for it. Fence, uh, okay, so it's used to synchronize execution on the CPU. Okay, so semaphores synchronize on the GPU, fences synchronize on the CPU, or sort of or uh, semaphores sort of order and waits for the GPU work to finish, and the CPU does. Okay, if the host needs to know when the GPU has finished something, we use a fence. Okay, understood. So we submit a something on a queue with a fence, and then we wait for it. Okay. Okay, so semaphores don't block host execution, but fences do. Preferable not to block the host unless necessary. Yep. Must be reset manually. It's used to use and conveniently two places to apply synchronization swap chain operations and waiting for the previous frame to finish. We want to use semaphores for swap chain operations because they happen on the GPU. Um, and waiting for the previous frame, we want to use fences. Okay, that I understand that. So, image available semaphore render finished semaphore in flight fence. So, are they going to be using mul? Yeah, the, I think they're going to using mul multiple frames in flight. Now. At least the semaphores, I think, well, I think all of these kind of belong to the swap chain, to be honest. So. Semaphore. Uh, image available. Semaphore. And render finished. As for the fence, I'm not sure about it. In-flight fence. Yeah, possibly. And we do that. Uh, get out of here. So I imagine create them here. 
maybe. Great summer force. And we'll call it um, image available. Some uh, for create info. And I assume we can just create it immediately. Uh, device. Get logical device. That. And do the same for render finish semaphore. No clue if that should be there. Does Mono literally have no flag for protect method? Yes, they do. It's called uh, family. It's the family of flag. Mono calls protected f um, family and internal is called assembly. Finished. Can probably reuse the create info, but don't really care right now. Creating a fence like that. Okay. We need to destroy them before we destroy other stuff. Okay, and this is where we get the current image index. Yeah, internal is assembly. Because the internal keyword limits stuff to the current assembly. Or to the owning assembly, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Monogod. You're welcome. So let's have a current. Uh, image index. I assume I'll need a defense as well, which was frame in flight fence. Create fence. Uh, VK fence create info. Uh, frame in Light create info. Type and the flags was what exactly? Nothing there, but here he says set it to create signal bit but i'm gonna hold off on that create a fence okay so we have that because my idea is we're in here we're gonna have a void swap buffers presumably okay need to destroy them as well
Okay. Uh, at the start of the frame, we want to wait until the previous frame has finished so that the command buffer and semaphores are available to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna... Mm, where should I put that? Because it's not swap buffers, because that's at the end of the frame. So what do we do directly after? We acquire the next image. So arguably, what we could do is have acquire next frame, right? And this will be called at the start of each frame, at which point we will wait for fences. We need to get the device. Fence count one, I guess. Yeah. That. Wait all time out you in sixty four max. So we'll wait forever effectively. Takes an array of fences and waits on the host for either any or all of the fences. To be signaled before turning. Field can't be abstract. Um, don't know. No. You can define a virtual or abstract property, but not a field. In the case that we want to wait for all fences, but in the case of a single one, it doesn't matter. Also has a timeout, set it to maximum value, which effectively disables it. And no wonder it didn't have the flag, yeah. Um, after waiting, we need to manually reset the fence to the unsignaled state. VK reset fences. Okay, so we wait for it, and then we reset it. Afterwards. What's literal? I don't know. Is it a flag? Because I have no idea in that case. I haven't used it myself. Uh, there's a slight hiccup in our design. On the first frame we call draw frame, which immediately waits on that to be signaled, uh, but it's only signaled after a frame is finished rendering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm waiting on something that will never happen. Of the many solutions, there is a clever workaround built into the API. Create the fence in the signal state. Okay. So that's why we need the create signal bit. Flag. Monofield attribute literal. Yeah, I've never used it myself, so not sure what that is. And then we acquire the next image using a semaphore. Acquire next image. That a Yep, using the logical device from the swap chain, time out which he has as max, the image available semaphore, 
no fence. And we'll store that in current image index. It might be the string name at some string this maybe. I don't know. Okay. Logical device and swap chain, yep. Uh, timeout in nanoseconds for an image to become available using maximum value effectively disables it, yep. The next two is specify synchronization objects that are to be signaled when the presentation engine is finished using the image. That's the point in time where we can start drawing to it. It is possible to specify a semaphore fence or both. We're going to use semaphore, okay. Yeah, because we want the GPU to wait for that. 60 errors. Jesus, man. The last parameter specifies a variable to output the index of the swap chain image that has become available. The index refers to the VK image in our swap chain images array. So it goes from 0 to 2. We're going to use that index to pick the frame buffer. Yep. That makes perfect sense. Uh, with the image index specifying the subject image used in hand, we can now record the command buffer. But we have to reset it. Okay, so we reset, we record, and submit, end the recording, and start over. Okay, so this will acquire the next frame. Good. into the current image index. So let's have you in 32 T get current image or get current frame index. We'll return that. Maget, what's up? Yeah, we're learning some Vulcan. Okay, so we need to call acquire next frame at the start of the frame. So basically, here, we need to do it using the context. Now, arguably, we should have like a begin frame, which will do this. But for now, I'm just going to do this. Um, um, let's get the swap chain up here. Do the swap chain, acquire next frame. Uh, Bitraptor, you're also learning Vulcan. Cool. Yeah, it's definitely a lot to learn. But we need to reset it before we can start recording. So, just do reset command buffer. There. Which takes the command buffer and the reset flags which he just sets to zero. Since we don't want to do anything special, we leave it at zero. I've been trying to learn some web GPU, but the source material is very sparsely available, especially when it comes to WASM. Yeah. I don't know, is web GPU kind of like a big thing? I've heard about it here and there, but all I think of is like, you know, using OpenGL to draw on the web, which, you know, has its problems. Submitting a QSM mission and synchronization is configured through parameters in the VK submit. Okay. WebGPU is to WebGL what Vulcan is open GL. Damn, that's awesome. So is this... Presentation is presumably swapping the buffer, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So this needs to know the command buffer to submit. So we begin draw, draw and draw. Submit. Okay. Which needs the... We need to wait for... For the image to be available, right? Yeah. So let's just add a function in here for now. And that's where we use the render finished semaphore. So let's do that here as well. For now, this doesn't really seem to be tied to the swap chain. So arguably that shouldn't be in here. Maybe it, this should arguably belong to the renderer. But for now, I'll just leave it in here. We need the fence as well, right? Yeah, we do. Get frame in flight fence. Okay. And this will just use those. So we create a submit info. We give it some stuff. Okay, submit info. Submit info. image available semaphore which makes sense because we can't we obviously can't submit the the queue if the image isn't even available yet pipeline stage flags color attachment output bit okay Okay, pipeline stage. Why? Stop selecting the menu bar. Wait, some of our count. This one e weight sum of force is equal to that. And then destination stage mask. So we're waiting for this or something. The first three parameters specify which semaphores to wait on before execution begins and in which stages of the pipeline to wait. Okay. So we'll wait at that, at the color attachment output stage. Yep. Cool. And we have a command buffer that we want to submit. It's 
signal semaphores. Okay. And see, this is where I'm like, okay, the um, render finish semaphore should definitely be owned by the renderer, not by the swap chain. But it's not that important right now. Signal semaphore count, we have one. Close that. Specify which semaphores to signal once the command buffers have finished execution. In our case, we're using, yeah. And then we just submit it. And we want... Oh, right, we need the actual queue. But he hasn't actually showed... Oh no, hang on. It's... Where do we have that queue? Is it in the device? Yes, it is. So let's add VKQ, get graphics Q. Get device. Get graphics queue. Uh, we only want to submit one thing. And the fence is the in flight fence, which is part of the swap chain. So arguably the this should be something we have on the swap in the swap chain class. We can have like submit command buffer in the swap chain so that's definitely a place where we can put this um later on surprisingly hard to make sub projects that don't know shit about hazard stuff okay let's add a verify equals vk success and i saw we're really close to drawing we can now submit the command buffer to graphics queue. The function takes an array. Yep. Um, the last, since hazard script is just a standalone scripting engine. Oh, you split it up like that, huh? My face is barely visible when I have this thing up. I should get dark reader. Okay. Uh, the last parameter reference is an optional fence that will be signaled when the command buffer is finished execution. This allows us to know when it's safe for the command buffer to be reused. Okay. On um, the next frame, the CPU will wait for this command buffer to finish execution before recording the new command. Cool. Subpass and render pass automatically take care of image layout transitions. These transitions are controlled by subpass dependencies, which specify memory and execution dependencies between subpasses. It's now a framework that ties every sub project into one. Cool. Need to clean up my render. It's all clustered into one file. Yeah, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time refactoring this to be more API agnostic and less crap in general. We have only a single sub pass right now, but the operations right before and right after this sub pass also counts as implicit sub passes. Okay. There are two built independencies 
that take care of the transition at the start of the render pass and at the end of the render pass. If the format does not occur at the right time, it assumes the transition occurs at the start of the pipeline. Cool. I'm gonna head to the toilet real quick. I'll be back in a moment. I'm not gonna switch the screen this time because fuck that. Okay, where were I? where was I? Right, there are two ways to deal with this problem. We could change the weight stages for the image available semaphore to stage top of pipe bit to ensure that the render passes don't begin until the image is available, or we can make the render pass wait for that stage. Um, Go with the second option because it's a good excuse to have a look at sub pass dependencies and how they work. Okay, my question then is which is the preferred and why? It'd be really helpful if they could actually explain that. Okay, I'm actually gonna have a look at and see if we do this in Hazel. Just because I wanna know if it's kind of a good way of doing it. Uh, I have no, I think the render pause is created in the frame buffer. Ignore this render pause, it's not really a thing as far as I can tell. Kin, thank you so much for following. 
Welcome frame buffer. Uh, EK create render pause. Okay, they do use the we use dependencies in. Uh, okay, so we actually have to do that for depth attachment. But do we do it for? Do we need this? The layout transitions. Subpass external color attachment output bit. Yeah. Sort of looks like we are. Wait. No, interestingly enough, we're not. We do actually set the pipeline. Wait, what was the other option? The other option was to change the weight stages for the semaphore, semaphore to that. Okay, fine, I'll do this for now. Did the music actually, did I? Hang on. Yep, that's the entire playlist. Um, let's try this one. Okay, render pass is currently done in the swap chain. Here. Okay, so we need to create a... Sub pass dependency. Okay, there we go. So here's the sub pass. So hang on. Yeah, okay, so they're actually a part of that. Let's do sub pass dependency. Dependency. Um. Dependence, dependency, yeah. Okay, we start by setting the source subpass and the destination subpass. External. Test sub pass equals zero. So, uh, specify the indices of dependency and the dependent sub pass. The special value external refers to implicit sub pass before or after the render pass, depending on whether it's specified in source sub pass or test sub pass. Zero refers to our sub pass. At external method, you need to define in order to convert from one, from, for an example, vector value type to float x. Smart. Okay, the next step field specifies operations to wait on and the stages in which these operations occur. We need to wait for the swap chain to finish reading from the image before we can access it. This can be accomplished by waiting on the color attachment output stage. Now it will work with other classes than hazard. Cool. 
Uh, yes, so it's pipeline color that and destination stage mask was zero. No, source access mask was zero. Then we presumably need these for the destination as well. I would assume. It's the same thing, but it's access color attachment right. No, just access. Attachment right or read? Right. Okay. I think I might have to go get tired so I can wake up early tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good, Marka. Hope you get some sleep before school. And good luck with uh, university. Dependency count, okay. So now we just add it as dependency. Each sub -pass dependency is for each attachment in the frame buffer, right? Maybe. Doesn't say here, I don't think. Um, specify memory between sub passes. Yeah, it doesn't say. But I think that might be the case, yes. Because I did see that in Hazel we have a subpass dependency for um, the depth attachments as well. So I imagine that's the case. Faceless Tiger redeemed stretch. Stretching is nice. The tutorial just treats them as black boxes. Yeah. And of course. Freaking Marka coming in with the hydrate. And Rid making a hazard clone. No, I'm making a better hazard. <laughs> and Goober Moosh also redeemed hydrate, so getting more water. if a following sub pass requires the frame buffer from a previous pass. Okay. So, okay, my question is, this problem that they're talking about here, uh, which is, like, there's a sub pass before a render pass and a sub pass after, um that you can apparently solve with a subpass dependency or by changing the wait stages for the semaphore to this stage top of pipe bit. Like which method is the best solution? Like, I don't get it. I understand, like, this is a good place to kind of talk about subpasses, but if it's not the best solution, they shouldn't go with that. And now we get to actually presenting stuff, which is where we're going to have in swap buffers. 
also, uh, I think with the render pass, wait stage at top of line sounds like the Zuka. <laughs> okay, so you sh you think the best one is to use the sub pass dependency. I'm going to present a big failure. <laughs> I need to create a percent info struct which will take our signal semaphore. We then create. I could just give it the memory address of my swap chain though. So, VK percent info. No, percent info. Percent info. I think we're really close to actually maybe having a. Uh, you get barriers for free in render passes. The driver manager, manager does that for you. Okay, good to know. I think we're actually kind of close to having a triangle. We give it the. Semaphores. Which is the signal semaphores. Which is the render finish semaphore. Pretty sure that's fine to do. We then give it the swap chain. Because apparently you can present multiple swap chains at once or whatever. Try a color image without depth path first. Better to get that triangle on screen. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I want to actually like set it up to just have a triangle and then make sure that my API is good. Which is why I currently don't even have a depth buffer. We need to give it the image. Hang on. Hang on. I did not create that emote. Did someone redeem like a thing where they could I suspect you made that one. I like it though. Yeah, you modified it. So we've given we need to give it the image index, the percent images too, and the index of the image for each swap chain. Oh, okay. So, this is literally just current image index. There is one last optional parameter called P results. It allows you to specify an array of VK result values to check for every individual swap chain if presentation was successful. Okay, got it. When would you have multiple swap chains? in a single application. Like, I imagine there's a use case for it, but I can't think of it. VKQ percent. Uh, device, which we use the same queue for both graphics and presentation. 
Yeah, uh, I did see that. You can just get the return of VKQ percent. If you have a single one. Multiple windows. Yeah, I guess. And we can do core verify here. Make sure that was successful. Submit the request to present an image to the swap chain. We'll add error handling for both. Yeah. Okay. Their failure does not necessarily mean that the program should terminate. So I shouldn't do this right now. So this is basically how you swap the buffer. Effectively. Or it's how you present onto the um, surface which is effectively swapping the buffer mm -hmm. cool cool so swapping the buffers i don't think we should do that immediately we should probably wait until Hmm. For now, in here, I'll just do frame buffers linked image views of the swap chain images. Yep. They are. Get swap chain. now I'll just stick it in here okay I think we're ready to hit that f5 key to see if it works If this works, I will be scared because I have to have done something wrong. There we go. Verify failed. We were unable to begin the command buffer. No, actually, that may not be true. I'm just stupid. Uh, where was it? I'm actually very stupid because this should be equals VK success, meaning that was a false error. Let's give it another go. See if I crash my driver. I mean, progress, I guess. Let's kill it. Almost feels like it's just okay. Time to see if I can read this. Um, okay, so VK command draw. Um, Dynamic viewports, zero, are used, but we're not provided. Oh, I, I, am I not providing those? Yeah, I'm not. Eddie, what's up? So basically, VK command set viewport for the command buffer. Zero, one, viewport. What about scissors? Do you have viewport as dynamic state? Yes, I do.
And I assume it's the same for scissor. Zero, one, scissor. I suspect this would fix it. If I've understood it correctly. Different error this time, so that did fix it. Oh, this is... Yeah. <clears throat> okay. V this is in VKQ percent this time. Uh, it's waiting on the semaphore that has no way to be signaled. You should set Windows Terminal as your default terminal. I am not a big fan of it, to be honest. I did try it out, but... Uh, okay, um, so it's waiting on a semaphore that isn't... It has no way of being signaled. P wait semaphores. What? So it's complaining about this one. The render finished semaphore. Which we use here. Wait a minute. I'm not providing this anywhere. Yes, I am. So I'm literally providing the semaphore in here, the render finished, and we use that here. Or do, do they have to be the same? Do they have to have the exact same memory address? And because we're wrapping this in an array, it's not gonna work. Can I do this? No. I can't because it's return. Yeah, because that's a. But this is just a pointer. Mm. But it's a pointer to a pointer. So why? Why doesn't this work? I'm literally returning a pointer. It expects an array. It actually expects an array. But does that have to be the exact same array? Do I have to give it a, an array here as well? Presumably, I have to do that. Right? But does it have to be the same array? Is what I'm wondering. Because does it go of memory address? Or the actual handle? Or the address of the first entry and the dimension of one? Yeah, but like... Obviously that wasn't working in that case. What if I wrap this in an array? So I would have thought it would... The handle is needed. So this is correct. And I'm passing it here. So why is it unhappy about it? Mm. 
Uh, fun stuff. Vulcan, why have you betrayed me? Is the present semaphore for the current image? Uh, it should be, I think. No, wait. Oh, I'm dumb. It's this. This is... I'm always using zero. Because I didn't have a way of getting the current image index before when I wrote that code. So I imagine that would definitely cause problems. Um, swap chain. Okay, am I using that anywhere else? Uh, current... So I imagine that would definitely cause it to freak out. Mm. Still not happy about it. Why doesn't it have a way of... Yeah. So, that was... Q percent. Right. Image indices. Uh, I think we're using... Hang on. Images past percent must be in layout. But is in undefined. Am I? Am I submitting? I don't think I am. I'm not. Thank you for catching that one, Marka. Need to, but that also means I can't do. Yeah, because I'm stupid. Because I'm swapping the buffer in and draw. For now, I'll just st stick it in here. Obviously, it's gonna be done elsewhere now there was one about like the image layout being on uh, set to undefined Woo! <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be checking out sasha williams um williams examples mm. Damn. We did it. Let me just take a snip of that. Oh, that's so... Oh. Damn. That's so nice to see. One thing I'm going to do real quick is under sandbox app. I'm just going to comment this out and rerun it. So much work to get a triangle, yep. And Marka is celebrating by hydrating. Oh. <clears throat> is it really a crash if it's on shutdown? Okay, so we're trying to destroy, I'm guessing, okay, yeah, it's just the order that we're destroying th things in. That isn't quite, because this is static, so I'm going to have to uh, reset it here. 
Damn. What time is it? Three hour, three and a half hours since I started working. So in total, it took about six and a half hours to get a triangle. Best wait for idle on terminate. Yeah, I imagine that because obviously we do get a bunch of this. But if they're not crashes, I don't. Well, I should definitely wait for idle. So yeah, six and a half hours to get a triangle. But obviously, it does mean we have quite a configurable setup, even though I haven't abstracted it so that it actually is. Six hours for a first VK triangle is decent. Damn. Yeah, but also like... It's no wonder it took like only six hours in that case because this definitely needs to be refactored heavily. Like this was my only goal was to get a triangle right now. So obviously there's plenty of stuff that will be moved around and restructured completely. But damn, that's hot. Let me just get a snip of that so I can send it in Discord. <laughs> because goddamn. Need to make make sure that I start centering the window. Um what well you can figure with Vulcan that you can't with OpenGL. Um, the entire pipeline. Like, you can configure literally the entire pipeline. Now deal with resizing. That, that's coming once I actually have restructured the API. <laughs> but yeah, like, Vulcan lets you literally define the entire kind of rendering pi pipeline. So... Which OpenGL definitely doesn't. Not sure what that means, but I'm guessing it means you're going to sleep. So, have a good night, Marco. I'm probably going to be heading to bed soon as well, now that I actually have a triangle. Because, hot damn. Just gonna go ahead and actually commit this first. Do I have a fork open? No, I don't. So yeah. Really glad I actually got that triangle rendering and <clears throat> Thank you so much, Pony. Obviously, I'm gonna have to rewrite or at the very least refactor a lot of this. Um, yeah, sure, push that, push everything. Whew. Okay. Yeah, pipeline configuration. Fun. Definitely worth it though. Um,. Finished initial Vulcan setup. I'm not gonna just write like, got first triangle rendering. No, let's actually do a proper commit message here. Uh, so I got pipeline up and running. Um, <clears throat> added a pipeline setup. Obviously, let's mark do work in progress basic shader loading um, do you have to do less work inside shader files when you configure the pipeline uh, not necessarily in the shaders but you like configuring the pipeline 
doesn't reduce the amount of work you have to do, I don't think. But it does give you more flexibility with what you can do. Um, like, just overall. Uh, you Like, you have full control over the entire pipeline. Uh, whereas in OpenGL, you don't have that at all, really. Like, you can, you can control some parts of the pipeline. But I don't know that you can, like, control everything in the input assembler or anything like that. So it gives you more, a lot more flexibility, I think. At least that's kind of my take on it. Refactored the swap chain a bit more. <clears throat> Got first triangle rendering. <laughs> Let's push it. Awesome. Okay, so that is probably where I'm gonna go ahead and end this. You have more fine grain control and local state. Oh yeah, that's one big thing. OpenGL has a global state for everything, which is not great. So yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end here. Um, I'll probably, I won't be streaming um, fusion work as much during the week because I'm working during the week but maybe during the evenings we'll see so yeah thank you everyone for watching um, hopefully I'll see you next stream have a good day or evening depending on where you are and see you around bye bye